Hi guys, so today's video we've done a step two. So we've got a, T a T5.1 transporter. We are upgrading the FM antenna in the wing mirror to an FM damp one. If you don't want an unsightly aftermarket antenna uh, on the glass or anywhere else, then have this genuine Volkswagen upgrade. Um, we've done a step two video, shows you every step that you need to do so that you can do this yourself. Right, step one. So Richard is now going to use a couple of trim tools to just remove and uh, disassemble or detach the glass from the wing mirror itself. Um, it sounds pretty tricky, but actually once you've got the trim tools in there, it's quite simple. Now I personally use a flat screwdriver or uh, a pair of long nose pliers. So this step is just to show you to remove the actual heated aspect of the glass. So Rich is using a flat head screwdriver, um, but you can use a flat head or a pair of long nose pliers just to pinch and squeeze the actual terminal because you don't want to uh, remove the actual spade end from the filament itself. Okay, it's all done, now make sure you put that aside. So step three, we've now got the clips. These clips are easily broken. You need to use the trim tool and a little bit of pressure to release those clips from there. Now remember, these caps are not really designed to be removed once on. So if you break a clip, don't worry about it. There you go, you can just see the pressure going in. Now, round the outside uh, of the mirror cap itself, you've got loads of clips. These are really flimsy. If you can get your mirror cap out without breaking one, you're doing a good job. But to be fair, uh, some mirror caps have been off before. You may be lucky uh, and it'll just come off in your hands, no problem. But again, we use a couple of different trim tools. Once you've released that, the clips there, you'll find that it'll just, should just pop off. But this outer or back edge is quite tricky. You can see, to see Richard now um, accessing the side of the mirror. Now this mirror, if you can see in the picture, has actually come into us with blind spot assist. Um, this is very rare for a VW T5.1, um, but this particular demo had one, so you will see a cable attached to it. So he's got a trim tool in underneath the top part, and it just needs a little bit of brute force and ignorance at times. And you can see at the top of the mirror cap that all three clips are in situ. And now you'll be able to see the cable for the blind spot that would need to be unclipped. Now, as you can see in the picture there, there's one clip still attached to the mirror. But don't worry, these are so thin and flimsy that if you can get your mirror cap out uh, without breaking one, then, then good for you. But we use a, a hot solder gun to just reattach that clip to the wing mirror. But the wing mirror cap won't make any difference to its functionality once it's been put back on. As I said, you won't see many like that. So step six is just removing the blind spot uh, plug, but chances are you probably haven't got that anyway. Once you've done that, just put that mirror base, uh, mirror cap to one side. Step seven, we're now removing the existing factory antenna uh, circuit board as such and you're just getting a little thin screwdriver in to release over the little tabs. And again, you can see that they just fit over. It's quite a rigid bit of plastic. So again, don't be afraid uh, just to get your screwdriver in and release those three clips along the top section. Okay, now this one, you've seen Richard already do this one, but it's actually got a double clip because it's got an overlapping section for the two parts. Now you're fixed on here with a cable and a little tiny torque screw. So this is a T10 torque screw, and this allows you to remove the little amplified booster part of the uh, FM antenna that is in there. So this is an FM and AM 
uh, antenna that is fitted from factory and we are upgrading to FM and DAB digital radio. And that just slides out now and then obviously the cable route down into the main part of the mirror. So step eight, we're now going to remove the door card. This is the grab handle, fixing down in the middle section and then you've got three torque screws along the bottom. Okay, so you've got a T20 or T25, sometimes it's the bigger one, it's the T25. You've got a T25 in the middle. Head torch is always handy, and a magnet, just to retro, um, retrieve that screw once you've taken it out. So three along the bottom, one in the middle. If you've got a magnetised head, that works as well. So cap comes off with a trim tool and then that will leave uh, two T30 uh, screws. So T30 is quite a big one. And that's one of the main fixings for that door handle. See Richard using a magnet there just to pull it out just for safekeeping as well. Now on the T5.1 that handle actually comes out. Now Rich is just showing you now the clips that hold these on. It's very rare to take a door card off without breaking one or more of these clips. Volkswagen have not designed them for them to be removed continuously uh, and then put back on. So trim tool in, just to release that, release that first clip. Some of these can be really tight. The warmer the door, the warmer the door card, the warmer the weather will help you. Okay, lots of cracking noises, but that's what it's designed to do. They are just clipped on. Again, don't be afraid to put a little bit of uh, extra effort on those to release. And if you need to get in touch with us with more door clips, you can do it. We can sell those to you. Same process on the inner side of the door, just means that you can't see as much. And once you've got your, your hand in there, you can actually use your hand as leverage to help the door card come off and release those clips. Now at this point you need to be very careful. So step 10, you need to lift the bottom of the door card up towards the sky, give it a little bit of a shunt with your hand. because that sits over a top ledge of the window runner. Now the reason why that looks quite stiff is because that is part of the window rubber seal itself. And you'll see in a minute, sometimes it comes off. So you can just see in the bottom of the picture there, that's it. Now the top edge of the window seal has come off, so you can just push that down. But this door mechanism or handle is the most important bit and the LED light for the alarm, central locking. So step 11, little, little black plug here for the central locking LED, got a little tiny tab, just lift it up and pull that little two pin black plug out. Put that to one side but don't forget to plug that back in. Okay, so Matt's just going to zoom in on the, the um, door release mechanism here. Be very careful, you break this, you're in trouble. Just a tiny clip that unclips from the front and then hooks off with a little tool. So Rich is now going to remove the window and the electric window mechanism. So where he's showing you with his thumb, you can just release a little tab. And that tab, if you push it in, will release that whole mechanism and push it out. You can just see that mechanism in there. And then carefully use your thumb, forefinger or a screwdriver. So step 12 is just showing you now how to remove those plugs there. Little push in, depress, release.
put that to one side. Door card can now come off, but this is where you need to check to see what clips are in the door left. So Rich is showing you now uh, the mirror. This is the whole mirror electrics you can just unplug. And step 13, you're gonna see behind this little bit of foam, the existing FM connection and any others. Okay, so 10 mil uh, spanner, 10 mil nut driver. You just need to remove that because that is your ground, your earthing strip for your antenna. And that is so important, otherwise your antenna won't work properly. Just release the mustard uh, plug. Push and pull out. Now you've got all your cables released for you to remove that mirror and you can get trim tool in uh, right in through the gap. That's it, pop out that, and that just helps with sound and any water ingress, so make sure that goes back. Right, so Richard's pointing to you to the bolts. This is now step 14. Again, a T30 torque screwdriver. You're undoing those three main bolts that hold that wing mirror on. So just get someone to support the weight if you're gonna undo all three, otherwise it's gonna fall down. So you can see on the right-hand side, Richard's supporting the weight of the mirror. Give it a little wiggle. Now, because we've released all the cables, that's just gonna pull up through. So you can see on the left-hand side or inside of the door, cables are gonna get pushed up through the hole and then out through the outside. And that's the wing mirror off. Step 15, so this is the fiddly bit. Remove that outer plastic cover or rubber, rubber coated cover. Now, inside here is also um, a, a chassis ground for the wing mirror itself. That's a T20, I think it's a T25, could be a T20, they do vary. So go in with your T20 and remove that. Just remove that little bit of fixing tape because you're still using the same wing mirror but releasing that FM uh, antenna lead. Now, that antenna booster that you unscrewed earlier with the T10, you can just pull that whole antenna through and remove. That's it, put that to one side. Old antenna there. And here's the new one. You got your FM and there's your dab. Step 18. We're gonna feed your cables back through there. Now you will notice also there's a GPS antenna. That's because we were doing another install at the time uh, for an aftermarket head unit. We'll always try and put the GPS in the wing mirror um, just because it's better signal. So feed those two connectors through. That's the new FM and the new DAB. Pull it all the way through. You can't go wrong at this point because you're just doing a reverse of what you've already done. And that's your ground connector. 
Step 19, which is just popping that T20 back in to secure the ground for the wing mirror and antenna. Careful not to cross thread that. If you've got a bit of sticky tape, cloth tape, just make it nice and neat so that none of the cables uh, are under pressure. We always use cloth tape just because it's neater. So just that water cover or the little barrier there to put rubber matting put back on, that just protects the internals. Creates a bit of a seal for the wing mirror. You can see that's bent out from where it was fitted from factory. Don't worry too much. You could always heat it up with a heat gun if you find that yours is the same. Now this is the antenna booster. Slide it back into its little sliding uh, latch on the right hand side and it'll line up there once it's in its little carrier uh, for the T10 little screw to go back in. And that fixes the booster. Now that leaves you in a good position to start fitting the main part of the antenna. So reverse of what you did at the beginning, you're just going to fit these on and clip them on. So this, the bottom just slides in over the lugs and it would slide in over that other one if it hadn't been broken when the cap came off, but that can be repaired. Little clips just clip over the top and you've got this middle one, which is a double one. So make sure you fold the uh, ribbon cable back over. It, double over the top third one across the top just fixes it in and the one on the inner edge This is the important bit here. You must put those underneath the lip, otherwise that's gonna stop the cap from going on and potentially damage your track circuitry for the antennas. Step 21. Just because we're neat and tidy, give it a clean up. Always be proud about the work you do, so just make sure it's a nice clean area for the wing mirror to go back on. So again, in reverse, you're going to feed the cables through the hole. Don't worry about the extra, extra GPS antennas. I said earlier, that's us just fitting one for a navigation system we're installing. So you can see with the head torch that it goes down through and you can put your hand in the other side. Can't really go wrong on this, but you do need to be careful that it's the right side. Otherwise the window mechanism will get in the way. Sometimes you can have a bit of a battle with the cabling. Make sure that that all sits through. It doesn't feel like it's snagged anywhere and that should just pull through nicely and allow the wing mirror base to sit back and locate on its little mountings. You can see the, you can see the three posts there and they will all line up and go through the hole ready for the T30 bolts.
So, okay, step 22. Rich is just gonna put the three T30 bolts back in. Don't do one up on its own. Just literally put all three in and then you can actually make sure that they're all lined up. Now, don't forget, we do this all day, every day. So, Richard knows that they're all gonna line up. So, but just be careful. Make sure that you put all three on. Make sure they line up, tighten them up. Right, step 23 is just now, again, putting that 10 mil nut or a bolt, sorry, onto the door itself. That is the ground for the antennas. If you don't fix this, the antenna will not work properly. FM plugs back into the existing one that you unplugged and that leaves us with the dab and then the wing mirror gets connected back in, otherwise it won't heat and won't electrically adjust or fold if you've got folding mirrors. This is the extension that we have made up that is specifically for this retrofit. It's all plug and play. So Rich is just explaining what we're gonna do with that cable now because this is important. Now step 24 is just showing you how to release the gator that is uh, passing or allowing all the cables to pass from the door into the vehicle or from the vehicle into the door itself. This is a waterproof gator. Trim tool in on that inside edge. You can just see the little lugs on there. Not too forceful because you'll break it and then it won't fix and clip in properly. These come off really nicely, as long as you're not too rough. So our dab extension now is going to feed through that top hole. Let's plug it in. Again, if you want to, you could always put a bit of cloth tape uh, over there. And Rich is also gonna be running that GPS antenna that we spoke about. But again, this is not part of the install, it's just something that we're doing for this job. Now, because it's not a massive amount of distance, you can pop those through and fill them with your finger, grab them with your thumb and forefinger and pull those through. There we go. Pull that through, pull all the slack. Yeah, little bit of little bit of wiggle room there for the dab antenna. Not too much though, because these cables are preset length. You don't want to leave too much and then find your short at the radio. Feed the cabling through the gator. That's it, through into the vehicle itself. As you can see on the left hand side, Rich has already moved that driver's knee panel because it gives you much more access. You can put your hand up through, there you go, and grab the cable or cables. Obviously in this case, it is two, but normally would just be one. You can plug your gator back in, nice firm click, and make sure that it's located. All important foam insert to go back into there just to stop road noise and any water ingress. Pushes in nicely, clicks home. If you manage to save the foam that you took off, because not always do they come off nicely, you can just put that foam back on the door just to stop any rattles or vibrations from the door card. Again, if you've got cloth tape or sticky tape, you can always put that on there. So step 25, we're now looking at the cabling on how we're gonna run or route that up through to the radio. So you've got two options. 
You can run along the bottom or you can go up behind the instrument cluster if you're feeling brave, which is, as the crow flies, the shortest route. So providing you haven't used too much of the cable, you can go along the bottom or along the top. We'll always take the instrument cluster out and go direct route behind the instrument cluster and into the back of the radio aperture. You can use some cable ties to fix that in at the same time. So step 26, your cables are all routed through. We're now plugging back in the blind spot if you've got it fitted. As I said, very, very rare, so you probably won't have this, so we can ignore it. So you line up your clips on the left-hand side, the right-hand side, and just watch how that top part clips into the three clips at the top there. Just make sure the lines are clean, clean. So you can just see those clips that Richard's pointing to, make sure they're all lining up, because if they don't, they will break. Some nice sounding clicks there as it all clips into place. And you'll feel that the wing mirror case is secure, irrespective of whether you've broken a clip, don't worry, don't panic, it doesn't really matter the wing mirror base uh, cover or cap will still secure on. Right, step 27, just gonna replace um, or refit that mirror glass that you've carefully removed. It doesn't matter, there's no polarity here, it doesn't matter which one you put on, it will still make and create a circuit. So you're just pushing those in all the way home. Just use the actual base itself, push it home, clip them on. You can't really go wrong at this point, putting the glass on as long as it's central. So the two little metal wings that Richard's pointed to fit in down through. And again, as long as you just place it on, you really can't go wrong at this point. It'll self-locate. And with your whole hand or palm over the wing mirror, you can just push home with a little bit of a wiggle and make sure that the mirror glass is and has located properly. Right, step 28, just putting the door card back on. Make sure all your clips are out of the door and back into the door card. If you haven't and you've broken some, get in touch with us and we can sell you those. And the guide peg that Riss has just pointed at must sit and locate in there, otherwise the door card won't go back on properly. And that's your cable for the door release. And then you've got your electric windows and your wing mirror assembly. So this plastic fin here is so important that this is located over the top here because if it doesn't, your door card will not be on correctly and it just won't sit nicely. Right, re-clipping the door release. That's it. Put your central locking nubbin down through the hole and sit and release that over. Now, you can see in Richard's hand that he's pulled the cables up through the for the uh, electric mirrors and the windows. Just make sure it's all lining up properly. You can see they're all lining up beautifully. If they're not, there's a reason why. So just, just take your time. Putting the door card back on is the most important part of the job, otherwise this door card will rattle afterwards. Now if you look through the grab bar, you'll be able to see that the two holes line up with the heli coil bolts on the actual door itself. This is where you're going to put your two T30 bolts, which is just pointed at them now, and we're going to put our screws back in the middle and the bottom section. So step 30. Two bolts, T30, both lining up for the door handle. One T25 in the middle, and three T25s in the bottom of the door. 
that secures it on once you have pushed all those clips firmly home. Uh, you can now pop the uh, cover back on, the little clip, push it home nice and safely, and that's it, done. We've now got the electric window, mirror switch, and the central locking. Plug it all in carefully, push the clips home. And then at the back leading edge, just push it in, tuck it under, and click home. That's it, you can stand back now and admire your work. Your mirror is on, your glass is on, your door card is on and everything is all in and working. I suggest you put the ignition on, just check that the window goes up and down and allows you to um, operate the window as you would normally without any problems and cabling stuck in there. Otherwise you'll have to take the door card back off. Right, so we are done. Hopefully you have now got a nice factory fitted DAB antenna for your T5.1 or T6, all fitted in the wing mirror. So whether you've got a factory head unit or an aftermarket head unit, this means that you don't have something unsightly on the windscreen or on the dashboard. If you want to get this product from our website, you just go straight to www.advanced-incar.co.uk, go onto the search bar, Type in wing mirror antenna or dab antenna. I'm sure you'll find it under VW T5.1 retrofits or T6 retrofits. Now that we've done the video for you, you can have a go at fitting this yourself. We try and upgrade uh, to this antenna all the time because a lot of vehicles coming into us now have got the pop top roof, which means that we can't fit many other types of antenna because first choice would be a roof mounted one if budget allows. This is the next best choice if you don't want something on the glass. So if you've got any queries, get in touch with us. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, don't forget to follow us on the socials and tell your friends and family and thanks for watching the video.